็ไม่รู้ว่าโดนอะไรนะพอรู้รู้อีกทีก็อยู่ในเรือแล้ววันนี้กันยังไปกังกับตันสมัวพาสปอร์ตเอสเตอร์ปัสกาลมาจำละอย่าดีกับตันสมัวตักุดเนี่ยถ้าเราจีซายกันกับบุรุษตักุดเนี่ยเดี๋ยวพอเราจะลงสาระตัวปะกันพัสดีกันง่ายกันอย่างนี้เนี่ยสิพอเราจะลงสาระอะไรอย่างสาระบัตรกันตัวกับตันเนี่ยอย่าลังสุงปุกุลปัดกันเลยดูมุกะ The high seas are a watery wild west, and its victims are many above and below the waves. If slavery exists everywhere in the world, nowhere is it more invisible, out of reach, and unreported than in distant waters. What do we really know about the lives of these at-sea workers? Two-thirds of the planet is covered by water. It's our planet's wildest frontier, breathtaking as much as it is vital to all life. A place of discovery and endless reinvention, a metaphor for freedom, as well as a profoundly dystopian realm where the darkest of all humanities play out. Over 50 million people work at sea, and human rights and environmental abuses often occur with impunity. Six, six people. We are still in there. So hot. This is. I've never ever seen this bad. My name is Ian Urbina. As a journalist, I've spent the past decade reporting from this lawless frontier. I run an investigative journalism organization called the Outlaw Ocean Project that reports about crimes happening in this space. This is the Outlaw Ocean. When a man desperate for work finds himself in a factory or on a fishing boat or in a field, working, toiling for little or no pay, and beaten if he tries to escape, that is slavery. Right now, there is a man on a boat casting the net with his bleeding hands, knowing he deserves a better life, a life of dignity, but doesn't know if anybody's paying attention. I travel to the port of Kantang with filmmaker Fabio Nascimento. Thailand is a country with a booming tourist sector and one of the largest fishing fleets in the world. To satisfy huge global demand for low-cost seafood, Thailand began to rely on migrant labor, and fish stocks began to plummet. So as coastal fish stocks declined, we started to see investment in a new kind of boat, a boat that could go out to sea for longer. That could go into deeper waters safely. In some cases, you'd have cargo vessels resupplying fishing vessels. So this is known as transshipment at sea, which pretty much allows you to stay out indefinitely. Transshipment is legal and widespread. Fleets can spend years offshore with catches from various boats, siphoned and mixed together aboard the larger supply vessel. Before the fish is transported back to shore, it makes tracing the origins of the catch virtually impossible, and is commonly referred to as fish laundering. It means retailers can't guarantee where their fish comes from, or if they're slave-free. The further the owner of the fishing company is away from the actual impact of what's happening on their boats. The more removed the consumers are from what's happening along the supply chain, the more horrific the abuse can be. Migrant workers flow into Thailand on the promise of a job. Women are sometimes sent to karaoke bars that double as brothels, and men are sometimes enslaved on fishing boats until they pay off their smugglers' debt. A labor recruiter will say, "Well, 
it's cost you this much to come and stay in the capital city. It's going to cost this much for you to be transported illegally across the border. It's going to cost this much to get you from the border to your destination. So by the time you've arrived at your port of employment, you're already in debt to the tune of several months wages, if not more. That captain now essentially owns this worker until the debt is paid. The villager will be trapped on the boat until the captain says he's free to go. Conditions on board are often brutal. The captains are God. They can beat and they can kill. Most of those I've interviewed aboard vessels spoke of 20-hour days with a steady supply of amphetamines to keep work going. Food is scarce, infected with vermin. And the smallest injury can be fatal. In this rare footage, a deckhand dies from an injury and his body is buried at sea. In a boat full of slaves, nobody ever sleeps easy. Fishing is ranked as the world's deadliest profession, with roughly 38,000 fatalities annually. In some ports of the world, like in Montevideo, Uruguay, fishing boats drop off an average of one dead body every six weeks. What remains unclear is how many bodies are dumped at sea, and how often do crew die from avoidable accidents, abject neglect, or murder. Thailand's government had promised to fix its problem with more robust policing, so I joined a number of their patrols offshore. They hoped to show how they had improved, which indeed they had, but there were still big issues. So um, we need to figure out that group first. So we need to figure out who's the bosun and who's the engineer. We need to, so we can split that up. The bosun is essentially the crew boss. He's the intermediary between the crew and the officers. A bosun is the exact person you do not want anywhere near the crew if you're doing these sorts of interviews. Because he's the guy who administers the beatings, administers the killings, who's spying on the crew to make sure they're not thinking about mutiny. And so for the inspectors to turn to the bosun and to have him be the translator of these interviews was, I mean, so screwed up, it was almost comical. Darkly so. So, are we almost ready to move these guys onto the boat? Yeah. All right, so let's. This was often pure theater. The Thai government claimed it had conducted 50,000 inspections, and not a single violation was found, despite a recent report that reveals three quarters of its fisheries are still linked to indentured labor. There are more people in bondage today than ever in human history. Most governments are disinterested in confronting the outlaw ocean because it's difficult, costly, and with minimal political benefit, since most victims in this realm 
are undocumented foreigners. When they do act, it's often clumsy and ineffectual. The lesson I learned on investigating sea slavery is that this is the absolute intersection of human rights and environmental crimes. Slavery here is also a direct result of the globalization of food production and delivery. It's based on a system that's decentralized and outsourced, and a business model which has turned crimes occurring in distant waters and down the food supply chain into a convenient, normalized blind spot. Thank you.